Hello, everyone, and welcome to RMD All Things Aesthetics and Wellness podcast with me, your host, Dr. Deborah Durst, and I have my co-host with me, Faraday, and I will let her say hello, and then we are going to talk about DHEA today. Absolutely. Hey, guys, Faraday Golombieski. I'm a nurse practitioner at Revitalize MD, and like Dr. Durst said, today we're going to talk all things DHEA, why it's important, what it is, why we supplement it, and we'll just get right into it. That's right, and we could probably go on and on and have multiple podcasts on this just on specific topics because there are so many articles on DHEA and lots of mixed um, information on DHEA too. Absolutely. So some positive, some negative, some old, some new. Yeah, when I went to pull studies on Google Scholar, if you just put in DHEA, 105,000 studies come up. Then you look at DHEA in depression, there are 23,000 just on that. I mean, DHEA for a supplement is heavily looked at because mm -hmm. it actually is a pro hormone. That's it right. It actually affects change in the body. Correct. So when we have supplements that really make change that you can get over the counter, it's very good to understand what it is, what it does, and why we use it so that you don't use it improperly. And in some countries, it's illegal. And in some countries, yeah. it cannot be over the counter. But in the US, it is over the counter. So. And actually, it was removed off the counters for a little while. It was uh, taken away a long time. I think it was back like in the 50s. I'd read that somewhere along the way that it had actually been removed and then put back on. Yeah. And I know in Canada, you still can't get it. And I think like in some South American countries or maybe all of them that it's illegal. So, so, you know, again, I think that there's lots of information about it. Some can be mixed and you can go down a rabbit hole and absolutely at it for sure. So we're going to talk in general about what it is and kind of, you know, general benefits and some studies and why we use it and, and when we might be a little more cautious about it. So what is DHEA? It's a long word, that's for sure. Absolutely. So Dehydroepiandrosterone is DHEA. I was going to let you so, do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a long one for sure. Yeah. And so it is part of your steroid pathway. And so when you look at... Um, steroids, you know, or the, the pathway of hormones, steroid hormones um, pathway, I should say. So when you look at that cholesterol goes to DHEA, which goes to all of our other um, sex hormones. And so basically, it's what I consider the mother of all hormones, because yeah. it's right there at the top. Um, and so it can go to form testosterone, estrogen, all of that. And so it's a lot of support, but the mother of all hormones and great for prevention of certain things. But again, um, it affects all of that hormone production, the sex hormones. And if you're really stressed, it can be cortisol. shunted down your adrenal or cortisol pathway so Absolutely. that you're going to have less of it to make sex hormones. So again, if you think about overall stress with sex hormone production and sex drive and sexual function, if you're stressed, Absolutely. it's going to shunt over to cortisol. So, so uh, DHEA is mostly uh, synthesized in your adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. So... Like Dr. Durst was saying, in that pathway, it all stems from cholesterol. So when we're looking at the our sex hormones, so DHEA is going to have a direct effect on what comes below it, right? So we have a chart and we have cholesterol, we have pregnenolone, DHEA, testosterone, estrogen, you know, hydrotestosterone, cortisol, progesterone, they all come off this chart. And DHEA is going to affect anything directly below it, which is going to be your testosterone and estrogen. But mm -hmm. also it can affect cortisol as well because it is made in the adrenals. Mm -hmm. um, DHEA can be found in um, tissues such as skin, bone, ovaries, testes. Um, so it is widely found throughout the body. Um, the most circulating adrenal hormone. Yeah. In fact. And so, yeah, it's found everywhere. So lots of good benefits. And overall, if you were to think about it, you know, great for bone, brain, cardiovascular health, mood, weight, weight. You know, yeah, um, healthy aging overall. Yeah, because it actually starts. So even when does it start to decrease? So after the age of 30, then most people are going to lose their DHEA and it's going to decline and need supplemented. And so a lot of our patients are on DHEA, but we do follow levels and have Absolutely. optimal levels that we're shooting for. So exactly, you know, too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing. It's very important if you're mm -hmm. taking DHEA that you do have a provider following that for you because you can take too much of it and stress out those adrenals a little bit. But we definitely want to be in a good optimal range. So we do want to push those because if we're 
doing hormone um, optimization, which we are mm-hmm. for most of our patients. Mm-hmm. All that DHEA does in conjunction with that is support what we're doing and further optimize um, through that pathway. Mm-hmm. So because DHEA does convert directly to testosterone and estrogen. And in fact, in women, DHEA supplementation can increase testosterone a little bit. and men, it usually does not. Yep. And so I think it's that increase in the androgen or increase in testosterone in women that actually when we look at DHA overall to me it's anti-cancer or cancer um, you know protective but there are some sex um, cancers that could potentially and there's again a lot of mixed articles and studies on that whether it increases or not and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it increases androgens but even you know do we give DHEA oral versus vaginally for our female patients that affects mm-hmm. how it converts in the body and how we see those androgens convert as well so we have some patients because of their history they don't take oral DHEA because they're more comfortable taking it vaginally because it, there is no conversion there mm-hmm. but it helps with the dryness um, and stuff like that that can be caused from low estrogens yeah and so basically you can give it vaginally and there's actually some manufactured brands that have it vaginally um, and it helps with dryness because if we're using DHA and optimizing it and we do follow levels because you don't want it too high like Faraday said you want to keep it optimal but not too high because an excess is a bad thing exactly and so when we're doing that and we're optimizing hormones a lot of that will will improve anyhow vaginals um in dryness or vaginal or pain or dryness um, that you might have with sex. But if you have some kind of breast cancer history or ovarian or uterine and you're concerned about it, then we can use it vaginally and it doesn't increase those levels, but it significantly helps with dryness. So It also counteracts stress hormone like cortisol. So Mm -hmm. on a way other end of it, right? So we can use it to help with vaginal dryness and with our hormones, but we can also help with combating cortisol mm-hmm. um, and maintaining a healthier overall life that way by decreasing stress, helping us manage stress a little bit better um, and just overall wellness in that form. And I always look at like, so the adrenal, whenever we're optimizing anything and we're talking about hormone optimization, you the adrenal does play a role in that because that is part of the sex hormone or the hormone mm-hmm. pathway and so that if your adrenal is sucking a lot of those hormones or a lot of those precursors sure. to hormones down that pathway if we do some adrenal support it supports everything else we do and so stress plays a huge role in yeah, in hormone optimization so you know we're addressing it from all aspects so we want to make sure that not only are we checking levels of all hormones and optimizing but that lifestyle and nutrition and you know Which mind body so and all that is is Absolutely. part of it so men and women have different levels right so basically mm-hmm. if we were talking about we'll talk about some of the things if you want to talk about some of the things that it helps with Absolutely. Um, So there is a large list there. We've kind of Mm -hmm. talked a little bit about it. Um, So it helps with weight management. It helps with mood support, uh, stress support, sexual and reproductive health. So we've talked Mm -hmm. about um, even with vaginal dryness and stuff like that. And even miscarriages and pregnancies. Yeah, that is a big big part too. Um, Age-related changes. So um, skin health. Uh, brain health, uh, cardiovascular, sus- cardiovascular health. Mm-hmm. sustained energy, mm-hmm. right? Because adrenals, we're talking about adrenals again. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of those things, it also helps uh, perimenopausal, postmenopausal, mm-hmm. right? Because it does support our androgens. So long list of things that it can help with and be beneficial for. And I think the big two things, like mother of all hormones at the beginning of the pathway and great anti-aging benefit to this supplement. But there are different levels, yeah. Um, and you want to be optimal, but you also, there's a different level for women than there is for men. Absolutely. And so you want to make sure that you're supplementing those different doses. So just don't, I wouldn't just go grab DHEA based on the fact <laughs> no. that you think it's a benefit <laughs> because again, too much of it can be a bad thing. So you really want levels that are checked on a regular basis and optimized and and not in excess. So we, in our pre-screening for our, our initial panel, we always look at a DHEA level. Sometimes people are, they are making 
enough DHEA where supplementing may not be something that we need to optimize because they're already doing well in that aspect. And like Dr. Durr said, don't just run to the grocery store and pick up DHEA off the shelf because it comes in multiple different doses. Um, and men and women do dose different. As women, we do not need as much as men of DHEA. Mm -hmm. And it tends to convert well. So you'd be surprised that you don't really need a lot if you are needing to supplement it. Mm -hmm. um, those that do supplement DHEA in our clinic, we do see a difference in how they feel overall. And they notice a difference when they're taking it versus not oh, taking yeah. it. So definitely important, but not something that we want to just run out and grab from the grocery store. And I think that's so important because we have lots of patients that come in that take women that take extremely high amounts because it's what their husband takes and mm -hmm. they're taking it because their <laughs> husband has it at home. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and their husband's told them benefits, but again, it affects women differently exactly. than it affects men. It's a different dose and it can increase testosterone in women, but it will not do that in men. So there's lots of things. And when we're optimizing, we want optimal levels of both testosterone and DHEA. And Absolutely. so the other issue is, again, not going out and grabbing it from anywhere because you, supplements are not regulated. And like we talked about, it's illegal yes. in some countries, not over the counter in other countries. But likewise, we, we have professional uh, medical grade supplements here. And I think that's the way to go with all supplements because they are tested and 30 third party tested so they send them out so whether Absolutely. you have a reputable reliable supplement shop that you trust is doing the research or um, in the office we have all professional grade supplements um so and i think that's especially i know that some of you are probably listening going yeah 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 well i can go to walgreens and get this for five dollars and i see our camera guy shaking his head because he's probably thinking the same thing for some of that yeah i get it but when we're talking about pro hormones and we're talking about something that is going to directly affect your hormone cascade and your sex hormones you don't want to find the cheap thing at CVS for that because it's not regulated and who knows what kind of filler is in it or what you're putting into your body, um, honestly. So definitely a professional grade um, in some supplements, even more than others, is extremely important. And this would be one of them. Well, I would also say then, you know, for, for those um, that want a cheaper, if you're not getting a quality supplement, so say it has 5,000 of, uh, international units of vitamin D3, but you're really only getting two and it's not tested. So you're really not getting the benefits and to actually get the benefits, you would need to take more of it. And so that's why you don't get cheaper, non-tested, non-reliable, because you don't know what you're getting. And so not only is it just not always, it's not always dangerous, but it's not beneficial either. And so exactly. why do you want to waste money on something that's not beneficial when you know you can get something that's been third party tested and has in it what's on the label? And then likewise, they also give you lots of support with that so that, you know, we you can get informational support, you know, you can get printouts of of information and benefits and yeah. dosing and all of that. But also we test levels of a lot of this. So we will end up testing. And yeah. if your levels aren't adequate, a lot of times it's because they've actually used cheaper versions of it that weren't beneficial. So And higher dosing. Mm -hmm. And we can lower it significantly with a quality product and mm -hmm. see an improvement across the board and how they feel. That's my big thing. Yeah. On. And again, you know. Some supplements, you know, such as this and Faraday's right, if it's a pro hormone and it's really affecting it like DHEA or vitamin D3, but also, um, you know, just getting everything that in like fish oil, like something that might go rancid pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly. And you just want to make sure that you actually have you're you're getting benefit from the money. If you're wasting money, you might as well just open the garbage can and throw it in because you're getting a supplement that is really not um, that beneficial. And a lot of these professional supplements aren't that much more expensive. It's kind of like professional um, you know skincare products versus exactly. Alta and you know and Sephora. You're still paying just as much. But you just don't know what you're getting. So exactly. So, that's so we've benefit. talked um, a little bit about weight management, stress management. The other thing would be mood. Um, there are a lot of studies mm -hmm. out there on DHEA and depression. I was listening to a podcast earlier that was talking a lot about DHEA um, from a pre known doc out west. And he was talking about how studies started like even in like 53, there are a ton of studies looking at DHEA and depression. And then even as um, 
like in 1994, there was a huge double blind crossover study showing that DHEA by itself um, improved depression in 30.5% of the individuals as a solo treatment. And that is huge when we think about big pharma in antidepressant medicines. And what was very interesting mm-hmm. is that he went on to say that for big pharma, for their medications to be considered um accurate and uh, effective that they only need to see change in 5% across the board in their patients, which blew me away because that is so low to me um, that I would think that it would have to be higher. But um, but DHEA alone in this double blind showed a 30.5% uh, decrease in depression in their patients. So that's huge. So we know that mm-hmm. DHEA can support mood um, and improve mood. Um, so, mm-hmm. and that's big because we have a lot of patients we see that come in that have depression or anxiety or have, that's something they've struggled with a long mm-hmm. time and they want to come off depression medicines because of the other side effects of it. So if DHEA can be something that we can replace some of those medications um, with and help improve a depression that's fantastic yeah no absolutely so and immune support too just yeah, a little absolutely like, little immune. final We've always for, about immune. yeah especially for everything that's going on so hopefully we um do you think there's anything else that we need to cover yet otherwise hopefully we've hit most at least from an overall um you know, topic covering um, DHEA. So we can always do things that are a little more specific, especially if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments, share, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of those mm-hmm. good things. Or any other mm-hmm. supplements you want to hear about more in depth. Mm-hmm. This just tends to be one that we do talk about on our other podcast quite a bit um, because it goes hand in hand with the type of medicine that we are treating. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely any questions, comments. And we have a lot of patients on it too. So (laughs) then again, let us know anything else because we're willing to deep dive into anything wellness and aesthetics. And we're here to revitalize your look, your health and your sex life. Thank Thank you. you.